Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back to another YouTube video. We're looking more at the Down Under CTF or that CTF that was on over the weekend. And I wanna showcase the forensics category a little bit here, just a few small challenges. This one starts off with on the spectrum for 100 points. It says, my friend has been sending me lots of WAV or WAV files. I think he's trying to communicate with me. What is the message he sent? So we have a file to download here. I'll go ahead and copy that link location and I will open up my terminal and I will hop over to my CTF directory, DUCTF, and this is in the forensics category. Let me make a directory for YouTube on the spectrum. Hop over to that and let's W get that file down. I'm gonna save it with attack capital O as, what is it called? Message one dot wav. I don't want that whole token in the name there. So it'll pull that down and now I have message one dot wav. So I can M player this. Um, I'm gonna turn my sound down. So hopefully I don't know what this is and it's not gonna, oh God, still blare your eardrums or at least mine. <laughs> sure, hope you didn't have to deal with that. I'm sorry. Turn that off. So a lot of noise, a lot of static, a lot of scrumbling, a lot of nothing good to listen to. Um, when I see that in a capture the flag challenge, it makes me wonder, okay, what does the spectrogram look like or kind of the audio display in an Im image rendition look like? And I'm assuming when they're mentioning the title here on the spectrum, that might be what they're referring to. Is it the spectrogram or spectrograph? There we go. A spectrogram is a visual representation of the spectrum of frequencies of a signal as it varies with time. When applied to an audio signal, spectrograms are sometimes called sonographs, voice prints, or voice grams. So I'm running Ubuntu Linux right now, and I normally view the spectrogram with Sonic Visualizer. Uh, if you don't have that downloaded, you can just go check out their webpage, Sonic Visualizer. I'll ho hop over to the downloads, and I'll grab Linux Ubuntu, it looks like. Okay, there's a primary link there and it gives me a dev file. Great, I'll download it. And then I'll move that from my download Sonic Visualizer into this current directory. And it finished downloading, great. So I will sudo dpackage tack i that Sonic Visualizer and it will need my password because I'm running sudo, but that will go ahead and install that or it'll try to. It totally failed, it relies on all of these things. Uh, can I sudo apt install those? Let me let me carve those out and just fire up Sublime Text. I want lib all of these things. So, nope, I don't need that. I want lib, 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 lib. I'm, hit, I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard so I can select those, then I'll replace all those new lines with a space. And let me see if I can sudo apt install those. Will that work? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, and then it also sets up Sonic Visualizer for me. Nice. Uh, so all that I did there is I just took that original message, copied it, and uh, hit control or hold down control so I could click on each of those. And then I would like copy them and extract them into a new page. And I would control H to find and replace and I removed all the new line characters or a backslash N with a space so I could get them all on one line and quickly sudo apt install them and in install those as necessary. So can I run Sonic Visualizer now? Maybe, yes. Okay, uh, no. I've decided you, you can't send my personal data. So let's go ahead and open a file. And this is in CTF, DUCTF, and it's forensics on the spectrum, message one.wav, a lot of stuff. If I go into the view or pane, there we go, pane, it's add spectrogram. That's that option there in G. So I could kind of move that up and kind of zoom in a little bit on it. You can see just barely down at the bottom, and I'll kind of try and zoom in here and drag this along. DUCTF, oh man, that's really hard to make out. That's really hard to see. Can I zoom in on that a smidge more, please? Okay, yeah. Uh, can I change the color on this? Let's do sunset. Oh, ooh, that's bright. That's a, that's a, a, that's a red, man. Magma. DUCTF, I can see the DUCTF right there. The window, 
that doesn't specify kind of the color that I want. Can I, oh, I can adjust the threshold. Uh, a little bit. Log, oh, it's even harder to read. Bins, peak bins, frequency, that doesn't help. Blue on black. Sorry, I don't mean to be frantically changing the colors there, but I wanted to make this a little bit easier for people to make out. I can actually see it. I can I can read this. I see a DUCTF, a curly brace M for H. Why? Is that a what? Okay, now I can't see it all that well. Magma. Mab ye, is that a B? I think that's supposed to say maybe not so hidden in leaked speak, but this, I don't know if that's spelt wrong. M4BYE, Mab ye. Let me try and bring this up to the top. Can I not do that? Okay, nano, flag, flaff, dot tags, D U C T F, may. I, I guess I'll just keep the weird misspelling because that looks like a Y. Maybe not so hidden with a zero and then SO zero and then H1DD3N. Good. I'm going to keep the typo in there and see if that submits. I guess I've already solved this challenge, so it probably won't tell me. Or you can switch the Y and the B there and then that is the flag. I feel like that's a strange typo, but. Regardless, let's wrap up that challenge and go do the next one. So this is called Spot the Difference. It says, an employee's files have been captured by the first responders. The suspect has been accused of using images to leak confidential information. Steghide has been authorized to decrypt any images for evidence. And then we have a file to download on Google. Okay, uh, I'll save this and then let's make a directory for YouTube. Uh, what was that called? Spot the difference? Yeah, spot the difference. And let's hop over there. Let's move our downloads public.zip or publish. Yeah, publish.zip in this directory. And I can go ahead and unzip that. There we go. Looks like we had a lot of stuff in there. Bad files I see in this directory here with a lot of JPEG image files. We can check that out. Ooh, and there's a dot config secret. Secret is funky. A lot of text files. <laughs> okay, a lot of text files. Interesting. Whatever. Let's let's hop in there and see what we got. Publish as the directory and bad files, desktop, downloads, images, messages, etc. Um, let's go into bad files and see what those were. A lot of JPEGs. So I'm going to EOG or I of Gnome all those. And I have this incredible picture of random colors and seemingly looks like static. They're all like this. Do I need to spot the difference, like the differences in each of these? Is that a thing? Let's move back and see what else we got in there. What's in the desktop? Cybersecurity URLs? URL files, are these like links? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, internet shortcuts to Facebook, down under, and UT Cyber. Okay, cool, neat. I don't care about that too much. What's in downloads? Down under CTF FAQ. Um, is that just the same thing from the web page? Yeah, it is. Okay, so nothing extremely interesting in that. Images. What do we got in here? EOG, all these things. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, CTF. That was great. Download.jfif. I like that one. <laughs> normie memes and there's a spider it's gone that was good okay thanks thanks internet 
we survived another day. Let's go into messages. What is this? Annotation. We've recently been receiving a lot of questions about the difficulty of our CTF, especially if it's beginner friendly. I want to clarify the CTF was designed for everyone from challenges aimed at first time CTF players to challenges that we've had to rate as insane. Suppose you're hesitant, you don't know anything about cybersecurity, never played a CTF before. We would recommend you play. It won't be a walk in the park, but you'll learn to try harder. Nice. Good. Good, good, good. That's in music. Uh, another JFIF file? A little bit EOG, all those. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Uh, videos. Tenor.gif. Uh, nice. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted, guys. Man, we asked. You delivered. That's the story of the century. We had a dot config directory so it's hidden right because it has that dot prefix so let me hop into that dot config directory and we have a reminder.png what is that reminder.png mm. fiddle error reading png not a png image what is it reminder so i'm gonna run file on that and it's a zip archive apparently okay can i try and uh, I guess I need like a make a copy of it because it has to have the right suffix so I can do like other.zip and let me unzip that other.zip and that failed. Okay. Is it genuinely a zip file? Let me hex edit it. I will hence it. Other.zip. It has a PK structure. Oh, but also has I headers and I dats. So those are like markers or, or file structure stuff for PNG images. There's an IN, so it looks like a PNG or a portable network graphic. Can I extract that out? If I do a little foremost on, I guess, reminder.png. I got an output directory now because that's where foremost will automatically put stuff, but nothing other than audit.txt. So it didn't find anything else. Lame. Uh, do we need to be like harder on? I'll, I'll use like a forced bin walk. So bin walk has a neat trick. If you guys don't know, uh, if you use tat capital M and then a DD equals a dot star with two hyphens there, you'll get bin walk to be a little bit more of a jerk and like force carve everything whenever it can find any structure of a file. But it still didn't find anything. Oh, sorry, lame. I, I meant to say LS. So it didn't extract any output with bin walk that didn't work for me um if i look at the hex edit though maybe this pk is just wrong maybe this is actually supposed to be a png file uh maybe it's just like damaged like the file header is wrong so let's try and change the hex of this to not reflect a zip archive but rather a png image so you could go ahead and research like okay png file header or like the magic numbers, etc., And you can get the PNG specification here. The first eight bytes of a PNG file image always contain the following decimal values. One, three, seven, uh, I don't want decimal. I just want hex. Can Wikipedia tell me? Yeah, yeah, okay, there we go. There's a magic number over here. Eight, nine, five, zero, four, E, et cetera. So let's modify that. That should be eight, nine, five, zero, Four E, four seven, zero D, zero A, one A, zero A. Uh, oh, sorry, zero A. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Control O to save it and Control X in hex edit. So if I file reminder.png now, oh, did I break it? Uh, EOG. Can I open that file now? No. Did I, did I mistype 89504E, not 43, 470D0A. All right, gotcha. Now I see the problem. I had mistyped. Now if I run file, it is a PNG image. Okay, great. So let's I have known that guy. And it says, how am I meant to recall an encrypted password? I know it had one CMVQ in the middle. What? Am I supposed to like brute force some password with that in the center? 1C MVQ. What else is in here? Oh, this is this this has the secret directory. So if I go into secret, 
oh no, it's a bunch of like nested file folders in here. And if I run find just to get all this output in here, I just ran the find command to tell me all the files in the current directory and onward. It's just a bunch of text files. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, so if I, I'll run find, I'll pipe it to xargs cat just so I can cat all those files out. And is are, are each of those literally just a base64 string? Is it just random base64 strings? What is it? If I had a, I'll get the output of find one more time and I'll try and cat out one of those files and it's just base64 string. That's all it is. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. And that reminder thing was telling us that it just had one CMVQ in the middle of it. So if I were to run find and then do that xargs and then I were to, oh, sorry, xargs cat to display all the contents of each of these. And if I were to grep for that one CMVQ, Ooh, it gets a lot of errors because some of those are directories, but this actually returns. It actually had a hit. And if this is just base64, I'm going to go ahead and echo this into base64 tag D. It says 1234 is a secure password. Okay, so now we have a password. And I'm just going to follow some context clues here because it says Steghide has been authorized to decrypt any images for evidence. So we have a potential password and we know we had a lot of images in that bad files directory. So let's try and extract out maybe a potential string out of all of these files with that password. So I'm going to, let me, let me echo my, uh, PS1 to actually equal a, a sane prompt so you don't have to keep watching the video from the corner. Oh, sorry, and export that. So now I have a prompt over on the far left side and you don't have to not be able to see what I'm typing. Sorry. Let's ls everything and let's ls and do a while read line so I can capture inside of a while loop the current line or the file name that I'm working with. So if I do inside of that loop uh, and I'll just run like something, something echo just to proof of concept so I know that the value of this bash variable line is gonna equal that, that, that file name. Done to denote the end of my loop. So there we go. Now I can just control that out on standard output and I have access to the file name as a variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run steghide so steghide actually takes some arguments, right? If you were to try and run steghide, it'll tell you, look, dude, if you want to extract something, you got to use the syntax steghide extract tag sf to note the like stego file and then the jpeg file or the image that you want to extract from. You can also specify a password or that tag p passphrase there to denote what we're working with as our password rather than typing it in interactively. So let's use steghide extract tag sf on line being the file name. And let's use tack P and paste in that one, two, three, four is a secure password. So inside of our while loop, we're just doing steghide to extract that image file, that file name there with our password. And we still have that semicolon done to note the structure of our while loop. So if I turn the crank on this, you might've seen that fly by. A lot of these failed. We said, oh, sorry, we can't, extract any data with that passphrase. However, one of these files did exactly, it did actually extract something. We have secret message.txt. So let's go ahead and cat that out. And there's our flag. Super cool. That one was kind of fun. Uh, a little bit of recovery, a little bit of a uh, just, I don't know, navigating and looking through that file system that we had un worked through and pulled out. But uh, finding that passphrase, that password. Um, what you could have done and uh, a, a road that I kind of went down is once I had that config secrets and I saw all of these text files in there, uh, one thing that I did, and I actually suggest maybe if you guys want to play with it, you could use Stegcracker. Um, Stegcracker is a tool that will automate 
Steghide by letting you use a dictionary file, like a word list or a list of passwords all in a text file. You can gem install Stegcracker and you can work with it, but it's just going to try any passwords that you specify in a word list on a file and try and crack it with, with Steghide, that same utility we used earlier. Um, so what I had done is I had actually taken all of those base64 strings that we saw previously in those text files and just made a word list out of that and tried those. I didn't think to go ahead and like base64 decode some of those because when I tried to look at some of those, they would just give me nonsense and garbage and that wasn't exactly helpful. What I should have done and what I realized you could have done is when we ran find, when we had all of the output, xargs, pipe to cat, so we had all this base64 strings in here. Uh, if you still base64 tack d each and every one of those, you're gonna get a lot of nonsense. You're gonna get all the base64 output. So if you were to pipe that into strings, sure, you'd get a couple weird oddballs, but you would find that 1234 is a secure password. There's gonna be a lot of output in this, so what you can do is you can pass an argument to strings, tack n to specify like the, the minimum length string that you actually care about. So let's say like anything greater than 10 characters is probably what we care about. Anything less than that, I don't wanna see it, don't bother showing it to me. There we go, 1234 is a secure password and everything else just is errors. Uh, if you don't want those, you can just take that xargs cat and redirect that error to dev null. Uh, and you could tweak and modify that tack n argument and slowly find what you're looking for. But uh, if, if you wanted to kind of narrow that or, or filter all that output, you'd find that password. You wouldn't even have to have recovered that PNG file. So that's a thing to note. And uh, you, could, you could crank on that, but great. That's that. Kind of neat, kind of fun. Uh, it was it was enjoyable to use Steg Hide in kind of that loop and, and, and crank through a bunch of stuff. Originally, when I saw some of those bad file images, that it looked like something that was like a two times pad image. And I was like, oh man, do I have to spot the differences in all those uh, different images or like blend and blur them together to find out what the pixels might spell out? And it was uh, lots of fun thoughts, but uh, I liked uncovering the secrets and, and kind of navigating through all, this, all these files here in this little data dump. So thank you so much for watching everybody. I think that's the end of this video. Very, very cool to showcase those challenges. But if you did like this video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave a comment, subscribe, do the whole YouTube algorithm things. If you guys like Capture the Flag, if you like CTFs, uh, quick announcement, I'm hosting a Capture the Flag game myself, Besides Boston, uh, besidesboss.ctf.games. You can go online, register now. That game is this coming Saturday, September 26th. It'll run for eight hours, so it'll be a little bit of a short game, but hopefully fun, a lot of good challenges. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.